Welcome to Beast TV. Tonight, we welcome Rick Wells II from Woodbooger Farm. Ever wonder what it's like to have boogers living in your backyard? We'll get you a fresh dip and buckle up. Larry Porsche the second. How you doing? Man, I'm confused. I don't know what YouTube's done to us, but I think you got it all worked out and we're going now, right? I don't know. Do you see us live? Uh see yes, I do. We I are. think you're good. Good. Boy. Now, it ain't <laughs> nothing like to a recipe for a stroke when you click <laughs> on it it don't come up <laughs> i know that's right uh, but now that we got past that it's gonna be a good show yep yep it's smooth sailing from here on out that's right fingers crossed <laughs> <laughs> oh me. well i tell you what why don't you introduce our guest for us tonight Man, tonight we've got a dude that we've known for quite a while. He's went by an alias of Woodbooger, and then he changed it to Woodbooger Farms. It's the man, the myth, the legend, Rick Wells. Rick, how are you doing tonight? Well, Rick, he's doing pretty good. <laughs> I see him drinking coffee. Hey, you I may have to un. <laughs> I, had my, I had my mic muted <laughs> well we were just gonna watch you drink coffee and wait on that eye shine over your shoulder yeah i'm looking for it <laughs> not doing pretty good just got off work got a shower and ready for this deal luckily mark stalled long enough for me that's right <laughs> well we're just glad you took a shower hey i do it once a once a season don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, why don't you tell us about yourself? Like, where's the general area you grew up and live now? And just tell us who Rick Wells II is. I grew up actually over in Logan, West Virginia, but my family, my mama and papa are from this area. And Papa moved to Logan to, to mine coal because there wasn't no work other than farming around here. It's basically about the same same as it is now. But uh, before he retired, he started, he uh, got came back over and built this house. There was another house that sat over here, and he built this house. And <clears throat> uh, I guess I was, I was a little fella, but maybe two or three years old. I can remember the old house. And remember getting bath in one of the old, the old wash tub, the tin wash tubs and the, the hand pump. Uh huh. I remember doing that. But I would spend a lot of my summers and weekends and just uh, pretty much any time that I had off, I would be over here. I remember, uh, I guess I talked about it a lot <laughs> whenever I was in first grade in kindergarten. My teacher gave me a book, some uh, kid's book about all about farming or something like that. But yeah, it's just a place I always loved to be. And uh, I had moved down to North Carolina. This is later on in life, uh, about 15 uh, years ago. I moved down there for a while and got got work, and work kind of slowed down. And I moved back home to Logan and had worked in a, a, a park. And it was just a seasonal job. It was something temporary until I could find something better. And one winter I was off over here come. Then I started looking for jobs, and I stopped in at a, a truck parts store to put in an application. They told me about another place that was hiring, and basically I was blessed. I got, I mean, just the Lord got me right into this place. It's the best job I've ever had. It's a, a really good job and, you know, good benefits and all that. So I moved down here full time 
and that's been about almost nine years ago now. How old? How old was you when you first become interested in Bigfoot? It's uh, going on. <laughs> I, Bigfoot wasn't on my radar till about five years ago, whenever we had logging done here on the farm. And I think that's what got it started. But, you know, I'm, I'm down here by myself and I would sit out here on the porch. I didn't have, I didn't have computer. I had an old flip phone. It's about the only thing I had. And I think I had TV then. I haven't had TV in a few years now. But uh, I would sit out here and read books and play with my dogs or whatever. And, would get screamed at and stuff smacked and rocks thrown and all that stuff. And that went on for about two years before I kind of got an inkling what the heck I was uh, dealing with. You know, it wasn't constantly every night it would do it, but it seemed like every couple of weeks that something would happen. And on nights that stuff would happen, it would go on for, for a little bit, like the buildings would be smacked. And uh, there's an old outhouse out here that they used to love to smack until it flooded and washed a bunch of creek sand up around it. <laughs> and knowing what I know now, I think they're highly aware of their tracks, and I think that that's why they don't, they didn't go around that building. It's all grown up again now, but they left that alone and started smacking a different building. But I didn't have an inkling. I mean, I guess, you know, I never really watched Finding Bigfoot or anything like that. Like I said, I had TV, but I always watched uh, news and maybe some history channel, but then then it got to where you can't believe anything you see on the on the news or history channel wasn't really the history channel it used to be i was in i was really into history so i just basically spent all my time out here you know when the weather was nice and uh yeah stuff just started happening i mean i would even inside whenever i would lay down just as soon as i would lay down to go to bed maybe 10 minutes later Bam, something would smack the crap out of this house and get me up. And here, I thought it was people messing with me. Right. right. I mean, I, you know, I had no idea. I had no idea about Bigfoot Trail. I mean, I guess I'd heard about it and, and whatnot, but I figured it was something like, uh, you know, out, out west, like the, the Patty film or whatever. But it wasn't really on my radar at all until all this happened. And like I said, I went for a, about two years before I – one night I was sitting out here and something right up here on the hillside just screamed, did the most God awful screeching, crazy scream. And right afterward it went, who, who that didn't sound like an owl at all. And I thought, what in the heck was that? <laughs> the next day I went up there and found, it. I didn't measure it or anything at the time. Like I said, I wasn't into this at all, but I found a huge track that was probably anywhere from 15 to 17 inches long. And I didn't have a camera or anything. I think I had one on the old flip phone that I had. But uh, I think not too long after that, I got a camera. And I, I'd set a bucket over top of it. And I took a picture of it. I have no idea where, where the picture's even at or the phone's even at now. That's way before I even had a laptop or anything. But that kind of gave me an inkling of what I was messing with. I mean, there's no, no person in their right mind that's going to be out here... <laughs> Basically, around these parts, you don't go snoop around someone's house, all right, and do it consistently for, for two years. I mean, if you do it consistently just for, you know, a couple of times, you're apt to get shot. And yeah. uh, I mean, that's just the way it is out in the country. You don't, you know, at 2 o'clock in the morning, you don't go beating on someone's house. That's right. a bad idea. My closest neighbor's two miles away. I mean, you know, it's just about as remote as a feller can get. And, uh, I mean... After that, and I found that track, I mean, and there was other things going on, too. Like I said, the house being slapped, dog food getting to eat, rocks getting thrown, different types of vocalizations and, and all that. Well, I kind of got, you know, whenever I'd go to work or at a relative's house or friend's house that had a computer, like I would get on there and I'd watch some videos and stuff about it. And I ran across a video that the, the title was something about how to tell if you've got Bigfoot on your land. And I think you fellers know the, the fellers that put this out. They uh, went over it like a dozen, 14 things to, to look for. And out of all that, like 10 of the things I had noticed around here. And I've noticed a couple more since then. So I got more interested in it. I went out, broke down, bought a laptop, got a decent phone and a, a little bit better camera. And it's kind of been game on since then. 
Now, after you become aware that this was going on, did you do any investigation to the history of the area or any of your neighbors tell you any stories or your relatives? Yeah, I, went, I went a long time before I talked to anybody about it. And I called a guy. I mean, whenever this stuff was happening, the biggest group out there is the BFRO. And people talk bad about them and, you know, the uh, finding Bigfoot and all that, you know, is all tied together. Well, again, I think I was blessed in finding the guy that I talked to because he gave me some, some really good information. We're friends to this day. A gentleman named Jack Smart that's from, from Kentucky. And he told me different things to look for. They're the ones that he told me to put up a, like a, back then I was getting 50 pounds of dog food a week when they, when they was around and not just, like for a couple of weeks, I would go through 50 pounds of dog food a week. And I had a couple of big dogs, but there, there would still be food in their bowls. They wasn't, the dogs wasn't eating it all. Right. And the lid right. would be back on this. I keep it in a five gallon tote and the lid would be on it. And I just couldn't figure out, oh, what in the heck is doing this? And uh, he told me to put a game camera inside of it. And I put the game camera in it and it just completely stopped. No more dog food took at all. So that was uh, one of the first people I reached out to was that guy and I got lucky. And then I got, you know, on Facebook and different groups and I met met up with fellers, uh, like you guys, like LBL and there's, you know, just some some really good people. And then some of them that, you know, that I just I don't know. I'm not I'm not putting putting them down, but some of the people with the mind speak and all that and nothing like that's ever happened here. I'm not saying it don't happen, but I've never had it happen here. But uh that's yeah. That's I mean. That's kind of how it all started. But like I said, I went for a couple of years, and I never was even a hundred percent. Even even after the couple of years of me just trying to figure it out, whenever I first started my channel, I wasn't a hundred percent sure that I was what I was dealing with still yet. It right. literally right. took me having a sighting before I was a hundred percent sure that yeah, they're real. Have you had a sighting? I've had a couple brief sightings. The best one I ever had was one ran across the trail in front of me. And what I was doing was I've got a holler that it, that's adjacent to, to my holler. I call it stinky holler. And I call it that because every once in a while, whenever I'm up turkey hunting or deer hunting or something, it'll just be this rancid smell that comes when the wind shifts out of that holler. And it just, it's horrible smell. It was like, kind of like rotten meat and skunk mixed up sometimes. <coughs> but I would walk up that holler at that. just not every time, but most of the times when they're around, like if I've had activity here around the house, I can go up that holler and get activity up there, like rocks thrown at me or whatever. Well, this, this time I had went up there and I'd heard a whoop up on top of the ridge line. And I think the day before I'd went up there and filmed something and put it up. Someone said, Oh, there's a Bigfoot in your video. Well, I was going to go up there and film it again. Cause I thought it was a shadow. So usually whenever I come up out of Stinky Holler, I come up a hill and I make a left and come down to the house. And it was getting dusk. This time I went up and made a right. And I think I tricked him because one ran across the trail on all fours in front of me. And that's the that's the best sighting I've had. Now I've had a couple other brief ones, like one ran across this porch one time. And this was real early on. I thought it was a cow at first. I was... Uh, it was after I got a computer because I was talking to one of my friends on there and I said, man, something just ran across my porch. It was huge, whatever it was. I think it was on all fours too. And I got a clothesline hanging up here, my old sweaty clothes. I'll hang them up there and drive till I get them in and get them washed. And I came out and there's a shirt hanging there and it was blowing. There wasn't no wind at all. So something had definitely passed, passed through there. But the, I, I haven't had a, a really good sighting. That's what I, I want to have. I want to be able to sit here and describe to you exactly what it looks like but my best description now is a dark fast blur <laughs> <laughs> i mean it, was, it, it blows my mind how fast that thing was well you know you mentioned that you kind of tricked that one by going a different way than you normally do yeah. a lot of a lot of people have sightings that way that they'll have a pattern that they follow most times and then for some reason they'll change it one day and boom, it's like the boogers yeah. following them to see what they're doing. And then you're in that booger's face and they're trying to catch up to what you're normally doing. Right. And I can't take credit for, you know, coming up with that idea. It was totally by accident, but I did learn something from it. 
I mean, yeah. I've learned you know, I've kind of tricked him before. I tried to pull the same stunt, but trick him once, they're like, "Fool me once, shame on you." <laughs> right. yeah. I tried it again, but I I left my fork, my ATV running, and I walked up there, and I think I got one on film. It's nothing groundbreaking or anything like that, but I do have a video where it looks like one standing on the side of the trail and kind of ducks down and goes back in the wood line. Right. Because I left it, and but it didn't. It sure didn't cross the trail in front of me. But that was, I think, the next day I tried that. After that sighting. Now I've seen recent videos lately of you checking your gift and stuff and stuff like that. Yeah. What what kind of interesting activity are you having there? What kind of interaction are you having? Here recently, one of my friends, one of the first people that I met doing this, and uh, again, I think it's a gift from the Lord that I met this woman, was uh, Angie Sedgemore from Snow White Bigfoot. And she, her and her husband who came down a couple of weeks ago and she brought these little figurines that she made and we brought them up there to the gift stone. And I went back up there to check it and I got a new, a brand new camera and old dummy here, I didn't try it out really good first and make sure, well, I hit the camera button. The only, I thought I was taking video the whole time I was up there. Yeah. And I took a picture instead, but they had brought a baby doll. I have no idea where they got this baby doll. It's just like the head and part of the torso and the rest is broken off in a uh, uh, lawn dart that's been chewed on. Yeah. But I went back up there and refilmed everything and I brought a couple of rocks and stuff up there, but it's just, uh, they turned a shell over and put a marble in one of them too, but there's been several things happen over the years with the gift and, and I kind of got out of it and I'm, I try to be careful with it now because some things that I put out that I thought, yeah, it's Bigfoot could have been a squirrel. You know, a squirrel can move, move, you know, knock something or whatever. But right. I don't think they're packing in baby dolls or anything like that. <laughs> no, I don't believe so. No. But what they brought, I mean, deer carcasses here and hung them up in trees like deer deer sheds. And the funny part is it'll be like a day after I get a deer. And it's like they brought the, they brought two two full deer, deer head carcasses with the heads still on them, big racks. And both times they beat me. They got bigger wrecks than I've got. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're stealing these deer. Both deer had broken backs. I don't know if they're stealing them off hunters or if they're killing them themselves. But they brought they brought six or seven different deer in here on me. Yeah. And I think they're bringing them for my dog, actually. They're not really for me. <laughs> well, I think they're trying to show you that they know how to hunt better than you do. Yeah, well, I ain't gonna argue with them. They beat me soon. <laughs> Do you see any kind of like evidence on these deer heads that they might have brought them in, like maybe uh, greasy, where the, where they have put their hands on it or anything like that? Most of the ones that they bring in here are the meats just about all gone. Like, all right, for instance, the first one they brought in here, and this is like one of my earlier videos, they left down here at the end of my driveway, and it had a broke back and a broke back leg, and it still had all the skin was there on it, but the meat, the skin was like rolled up, like twisted in, in knots and stuff, but all the meat was gone. This, you know, the skin wasn't covering the bones, it was hanging there with the bones. Right. But, uh, yeah, as far as greasing marks or anything like that, I mean, I've looked, you know, if someone kills a deer, then you can usually see uh, knife marks or whatever on them. But these these deer don't look like they had any knife marks or even really any like marks from like coyotes or something even on them. They're, uh, they're just stripped of all the flesh or most of the flesh, not all of it. Uh -huh. like, uh, between the ribs and stuff are, is usually still there and some up still hanging on the, the bones, but most of it's already gone. Well, I've heard Bar Baron Kumbo say that once a booger touches a uh, touches a carcass, or no other animal will touch it for some reason. I don't know if it's the scent or what, but yep. yeah, yeah, I've heard that too. But like I said, I think they bring them in for my dog. I swear, and I know it sounds silly, but I had another female dog here before too, and. My dogs, that like the one I got now, she don't bark at all. But both these female dogs, whenever I was having activity, I could come home and be out here just sitting like right like I am now, 
and my dog would start smelling around and then maybe hear something, get all perked up and that tail starts to wagging and they take off upside the hill like their buddies are there. Right. And then there'll be deer or something, end up deer parts or whatever, end up in the yard. So I think they're bringing them to her, to be honest. But sometimes they bring them. I've got a big old uh, chestnut tree out here. They put like almost a whole body as the, the head and the, the rib cage and everything. I think the legs were missing off this. They stuck it way up, like 20 foot up in the, up in a tree out here. So I don't know what what that was about, but they brought in man dead chipmunks, a dead hawk one time, oh. all kinds of different things. Oh. But she, I mean, it don't seem to bother her, but I think she's buddies with them. Now, well, the male dogs, they would cower. They wouldn't if that was having. They wouldn't get off this porch. <laughs> <laughs> how how often do you have activity? Do you, do you think that they like might move through the area? every couple of weeks every once a month or what you know just how often do you think that you're seeing activity well i used to keep it marked down on the counter every time i would have activity and a couple years ago i could i could mark it down on the calendar within a day or so whenever they'd be back and they would come back like once every three weeks stay here from anywhere from three to six days and they was gone six was very rare but I think even if they was just in my general area, I don't think they can stay in one area. If they did, then they would eat everything. All the game would yeah. be scared yeah. off. And, you know what I mean? They're, right. they're flesh and blood creatures that have to eat. And all these other critters out here want to survive too, so they're not going to stay, stick around with a bunch of boogers chasing them. Uh, but most of the activity was, you know, pretty hot and heavy for three, at least three days. And then I think whenever, whenever they knew that I knew that they were there, like in the beginning, they would mess with me and be done with it. But then whenever I would start, you know, messing back or whatever, then they would come in. I think maybe they could hear my truck. Like if they wasn't here on my property, they might be in like the next ridge line over and, and hear me or whatever and come in and just throw a couple rocks or do some calls or mess with me, doing whatever, you know, they thought was cool. And uh, sometimes it would last up to six days. Now, that was rare. Usually it was they had three to five days. Right, pretty, pretty typical, but it was about once every three weeks. Now it's it's kind of, I thought I had it down, man. But every time I think I got something down that they do, they change it up on me, and uh, I, I guess it's just how they go, you know, unknown for so long. They don't they don't keep a pattern like we do. This, this bunch here don't it, anyway. How large, how large is your research area? I own 200 acres here on the farm and my farm is totally surrounded by uh, another farm that's got a hunting club. A guy's now running cattle on them. He's done that for the past couple of years, but they own thousands of acres. And then one piece of my farm butts up to my uncle's farm and he owns a couple thousand acres. So I've got access to all that. And then butted up to that is some actually some state land that the state bought up like three years ago for, they say it's for watershed purposes. I don't know. But uh, so I've got access to it quite a bit. And then I, there's a lake nearby that I go to. And I've had the biggest track I've ever found was at that lake. And I've had different things happen there, too. How large was that? Oh, right? The biggest one I ever found. I think I sent you a picture of it. The one It, it was uh, 17 and a half inches. We're getting a little bit of reverb. Rick, you may have to put on your headphones. Uh -huh. Let's see if that helps it. Uh-oh. I got them. They're a pretty color. You like that? Yeah. Yeah, I like blue. Is that better? Okay. I believe so. I, I believe that's what the problem was. We was picking up a reverb off your speaker and with the headphones in, it cuts it out. Have you found any common denominators that has helped you connect the dots on your farm? Uh, maybe like uh, what, what people call structures, uh, like tree twist, or I look for like weaving in, in structures and i've noticed if uh 
if you follow them out, then that kind of it kind of points you in the direction they're going. Like a couple of years ago, I tried to follow their their trails, and you know, I copied your all's term the the Tall Man Trail, and I would follow them out. But around here, I've noticed here, and this has been something recent, and I'm have to change my mind next week. But on points around here, it seems like they like to hang out on points. You know what I mean by a point on the ridge line? Mm-hmm. Yes. They seem to be uh, hanging out on those. I, I always find uh, I always find uh, a lot of recent activity on these points or older activity, like the structures. Another thing I look for is rocks. I, I always find these big rocks that are laid out on the trail or just you know laid out on the ground that haven't rolled anywhere. A lot of them's up on top of a ridge line, but something's put that rock there. And I think I think the boogers use them to hunt with. Like, uh, when, okay, for instance, whenever we went to LBL and we was up at the, the camp, the campground that they shut down because of the, the kill site of the family. Right. We went to the shower houses and Kumbo was, was showing us about the kill boxes up there. And that's what I've noticed a lot of those out on these points and stuff. So I, I try to look for, for stuff like that and the rocks and all that. Have you noticed that any activity changing during the deer rut? The, the it seems to to pick up here now. This year, I, I don't know. There haven't been as many hunters either because I haven't heard as many shots, or that might because be because we've got such a huge mass of uh, acorns out this year. There's just they're everywhere. Yeah, the, deer, the deer's not moving as much because I haven't seen as many deer, but uh. Usually during hunting season, like I said, there's a hunting club and there's probably probably about ten guys. And then beyond them, there's some private property out out that way that a guy's got a little hunting. His buddies come over and they hunt. But I've noticed that during hunting season, the activity kind of picks up around here too. I think they're pushing them in here because it's usually just me that hunts here. Right. Uh, yeah. But w- one thing I have noticed is. <laughs> Whenever I hang up a tree stand, and I've noticed this for a while, like actually one of the first cool things that happened to me, I hung up a tree stand back here. Uh, I call it the corral now because there's like a kill box there where they pulled over trees and just different blinds and stuff up there. And it's right next to Stinky Holler, but I hung up a uh, climber stand and went back up there to check on it like a week later, and there was just a huge X between two trees. Yeah, and uh, it had like a Y stick down on the middle of it. I thought, well, I know that wasn't here whenever I came up. So this was in the fall of the year, and I stuck three different leaves on them on the top of that Y stick, stuck them through the stick, three different colored leaves, and went back up to it a couple of days later, and all the leaves were gone. I thought, huh. <laughs> so I took off a piece of my a little string off an of orange vest and tied that on there. Well, they ended up disappearing. Hmm. So then I took, I think I took an apple up there and a jar of peanut butter. And there was a crook in a tree that this X was on one of the trees. And I jammed that peanut butter jar down in there. And it was almost a full jar of peanut butter. And I'm going to say right now, don't feed these things. This was a mistake yeah. that I made earlier on. And I don't advise anybody doing it. If you have to do it, do it something natural. But, you know, especially peanut butter, that's probably the stupidest thing I could have brought up there. <laughs> but used but there's about that much left in out of a big jar of peanut butter about that much left in the bottom and they had set it on the bottom bottom part of my tree stand sitting upright with the lid screwed back on it <laughs> they were wanting a refill <laughs> i guess <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah that was that was pretty wild but now i've noticed anytime i build a uh well i don't build it but i put up a tree stand or something Man, within a week, there's trees pushed down around it and branches and stuff pulled down. And whenever I built my hunting shack that I was talking to you about earlier, Larry, uh, every trip I would go back and forth, there'd either be a tree drug across the road or a limb snapped down in, in my trail that I know wasn't there because I was getting my firewood from up there and I'd cut out all the limbs so I wouldn't scratch my truck all the, all the crap. Yeah. And there would just be stuff pulled down in front. I mean, it didn't matter if I was gone an hour, a day, or 10 minutes. There was always something in that trail whenever I would come back. 
Or huh. ninety percent of the time, anyway. Right. Because it took me about a week to get all my material and stuff up there. It, it probably took me about five days to get all that up there and, and get it built. But it was uh, one time I was working on it, and it was getting close for me to time for me to go to work. And I heard a huge tree fall down below me. And I thought, well, that's weird. You know, no wind or anything blowing. It was, you know, just, it, you could tell it was a huge tree. So I started headed down on my four-wheeler. It, like I said, it was about time for me to go to work. Well, I see something moving down below me, and here come two deer straight up the hillside from where that tree had fallen. And they were both looking back over. They seen me, but they were looking back over their shoulder and ran right up to me. I mean, within within five yards of me. And crossed the trail from me and got down on the other side and just stopped and kept looking back down that way. And I'm like, well, what the heck are they running from? That was pretty wild. I think they was running from a booger. <laughs> <laughs> That's a strong possibility. Yeah. No doubt. Have you ever been in that hunting shack and had one of them come up and slap the side of it or anything? No, but they can only, uh, unless they climb up a rock and the rock kind of goes out and the edge of it goes down and in, if they can, you know, they and they probably can on these guys. Yeah, probably one way back there to me, and I've never had that smacked. Which, if they'd smacked it too hard, I'd been over the rock. I mean, it's like a thirty foot drop at the edge. Of the <laughs> <laughs> so no, but this last time that I went up there, I did get something on my flare. I've been bringing my flare up there with me. You know, early in the morning, whenever I go go up there, I try to get up there an hour before first light. And this last time I went up there, and I got a big flare hit. Now I'm not saying it was a booger or anything. But it wasn't there once I tried to get it look again. It wasn't there, but it was something. It looked like it was standing upright. So yeah. Not really, and it was pretty far away, but it was big, whatever it was. Well, we want to tell, we want to ask everybody if you will hit that thumbs up button for us, we will really appreciate it. And if you have any questions for Rick, if you will put them in all caps, then that'll help Larry be able to spot them on the chat. And Rick, you've talked you've talked about that you have a FLIR and a cameras. What what other equipment do you use to help gather evidence? Uh, well, I mean, I've got a recorder, and that's you know that's pretty handy to to leave out. I've actually got two recorders, and one of the things that I love to do, and Kane Michael told me this down at LBL, was to plug in the uh, your plug in some headphones to your recorder. It gives you like this super hearing. Let's I think that was me, Rick. And don't you take, <laughs> don't do it. Huh? Was that you? Yeah, that was me. It might have been you. Well, dude, sorry, Kane. <laughs> <laughs> you tried. Yeah, Mark caught me. But uh, but yeah, that's 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 a really good trick. But I've got two different flares. I got one that goes on my phone, then the the regular flare, and then I just recently a couple weeks ago bought a new camcorder and i've got a uh uh the bionic what what they call the bionic ear whatever they are yeah yeah got one of those and i guess that's about it i did have a 360 camera but apparently it's not not very good at going underwater whenever you flip your canoe with it (laughs) (laughs) i love that thing too but uh and I've got, I think, I, yeah, I got a little uh, GoPro and a couple of different smaller cameras. Well, it's kind of like what you said earlier. I mean, this it can be a money pit. You oh, know, man. you'll come up with these little schemes and mm-hmm. and strategies and and think, you know, okay, if I had this, I remember Larry when he bought his first FLIR. Boy, he thought that was it. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it's it a, was. It's a, it's a lot more to it, isn't it, Larry? It's a whole lot more to it. And whenever you watch it go down a hole in a bridge into a creek, it really makes you sick at your stomach. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 well, 
But yeah, I remember getting that that clear, and you thought, man, I've got them now. But I mean, it's just, and I've got a couple things on clear. It's nothing definite. Again, but I think I think what I got on it's pretty good. But man, they're just so daggum hard to hard to film. You know, I was very naive yeah. whenever I first got in this. I was like, man, these yeah. people on big trips, going here and there, and I got them in my backyard. I haven't filmed in a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that's the idea you get about a flare is that it's just going to open up a whole new world after it gets dark, and it just don't. No, no, it don't <laughs> at all. But I mean, right? it, they're restricted too. It don't see through things, you know, like leaves. Leaves are right. a big problem. If there's any moisture in the air, then there you might as well not even have it. Right. But uh, I mean, there's been a, a couple of times that I wish to God I would have had a flare because I think I could have done really good with them but and like i said i've got a couple things now that that i think uh, i think boogers but uh yeah just it's yeah it's, it gets expensive very expensive <laughs> just keeping them away from my house and my critters like i've got one two three four five six uh game cameras set up right now just around the house not for deer at all and I just bought an extra camera, so I've got eight security cameras with infrared on them. And that's not to film boogers. That's to keep them away. To keep them away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's better than a booger light. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it worked for me. Jesse Trotter asked, have you ever had infrasound sickness? I've, I've got uh, one time, and I didn't get this record or anything but from up here on the hillside a lot of my activity happens right up here on the hillside where the gifts and stuff is but i had one i mean it sounded like a low droning plane and i was sitting over there on that end of the porch and i kept hearing it and hearing it and i even got out looking for a plane i noticed it was coming from the hillside now what i think now is it was a young booger trying it but it couldn't do it but i have had infrasound and i've actually got it recorded you can hear like a strange hum and it did kind of make me a bit dizzy and even even sick to my stomach. But as soon as I got away from it, it kind of ended after I sat down and chilled out for a while. But I got it during the, uh, one of the live streams I do out here at night. Uh huh. Harold Denton asked, "How far do you live from Bristol, Virginia?" Mm, Bristol is probably a couple of hours from here. Yeah, about maybe two and a half hours. And Kathleen is asking, have you seen Nutsy at all lately? No. Nutsy? That was my little flying squirrel I <laughs> kept for a while. My cat's drug in a little baby flying squirrel. I was out working on a tractor, and they had something over there. I thought they had a frog down by the creek. And then all of a sudden, it took off running, and I thought, well, what the heck was that? I thought at first it was a mouse, but it didn't look like a mouse. And I went over there, and it was a little tiny baby flying squirrel i mean it was so young it, that it couldn't eat solid food i had to feed it milk and everything and i kept that little feller for a few weeks and got him nursed back to health and he's flying around and just you talk about quick he's quick as a booger and then then he started chewing on cords and stuff and i thought well time for you to go back out <laughs> so I've, I've sent the little guy free which was my intention to begin with because it's a wild critter and he needs to be outside right hey. Rick, can you say that little fella was no bigger than a squirrel? Yeah, he's, that little fella is no bigger than a squirrel. <laughs> All right, I feel better now. Spen <laughs> Spencer wants to know whenever you're having the dog food taken, did you put a camera inside the dog food container? Yeah, inside the tote. And how, how did that go? It stopped. Just as soon as I don't, I mean, I don't know how they would, unless they watched me put that in there. And this was back inside of a shed. So, and they could have seen it because it's wide open on the front part. And they could have seen me st stick it down in there, but they somehow they knew it. I don't know how. I mean, I, I, I have no idea. People say they see, they might be able to see infrared or, you know, they might be able to smell it, but I think they do a lot of watching. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. I do. But they're, you was talking about their prints a while ago. Whenever they was getting the dog food out of it, they left prints on it one time, and they was like oily prints, and they stayed on there for man well over a year. You can kind of tell where they're at now. Yeah. And I had company down here one time, uh, and they was in a 
uh, RV, one of the, the ones you drive, and I've got pictures of prints that they left on those little prints. They was like four inches long by two inches wide, and there's two of them. Right. She did actually see, said she seen some up on the side of the hill that night. And then my other buddy, he's got a, uh, a little camper that there was prints on it too. And all these prints are just really, really, they're old and they stick around for a long time. Mark? Yes. I heard you take a deep breath. Well, Rick, tell us what your protocols are with sharing evidence. Once you feel like you have given an honest effort eliminating anything else that it could be besides a Bigfoot. Most of the times I just put my videos up, man, and I try not to, to claim anything on them and a lot people will see stuff in it and I'll try my best to go back and debunk it. And that's one of my best sightings I ever had was going back to, to try to debunk it or prove that something was there. And, uh, you know, I try not to claim that anything's Bigfoot in my, in my videos or any of my evidence. And I've got, dude, I've got like cards full of just videos that I took that most of my I've, I've not even went over. <laughs> I've been kind of slack a lot, a lot here lately, but I mean, just so much other stuff's going on. But, uh, I try to, I try to discount a lot of things. Like if we hear a noise out here, I'll look and look and look until I can try to find, you know, one time we heard a noise, nobody could figure out what that was. I was, out here on a live stream it ended up being a fisher cat which i didn't even know was a critter but it's like a little weasel that uh -huh. makes that noise yeah it was crazy sounding but um yeah i try to you know there's certain things that that happen like whenever they're around they'll do owl sounds and they're very very good at mimicking different critters and uh but you'll hear like a barred owl then a screech owl sound and then i hear it recently i heard uh the great horned owl sound and which was just different but then whenever the rocks start flying and stuff like that i mean it makes you wonder is that is that really an hour or, you know i don't right. know if any other critter that, that throws rocks but there's been a lot of a lot of that especially after i put these cameras up they don't come around the house to slap it so they throw rocks they stand they, they know their limits yeah How they right. know, i have no idea but they know their limits they know that you know, if I get here, then I will get, how they know, I have no idea. How they know that what that camera does, I have no idea. But so far, I haven't had no luck on getting them on, on video. The closest I had was something was messing around down here at the barn. My turkeys take off. You can hear the door slam, and then you hear, like, talking. But nothing on the video, just noises. So how they do it, man, I have no idea. It is pretty amazing. It, it's uh, crazy. I mean, I can see why people think that they, you know, disappear and why they, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? All these wild theories and, you know, the mind, mind talk and stuff like that. I can see why people think that, but it's, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I can't, some of it's really hard to explain. But yeah. I think, it's, I think, I think they're a natural being created by the creator. And, uh, but man, they're smart. <laughs> they've got a yes, sense of humor. Uh, I've heard them laugh. I mean, they they pulled a trick on me and laughed about it. Took off running and laughing. Yeah, I've heard them. I've heard them say help or holler help, and it was right out here. I was on the other side of the house, and I heard help plain as day. I can hear a car coming two miles away, and I walked all the way down to the end of this road to make sure there wasn't nobody that needed help. And there was nobody, you know, around here. And it it was close. It was like they was right here. Oh, and it went hell plain as day so i don't know if they're mimicking someone which that's creepy that word that they're mimicking help why would somebody be hollering help and, <laughs> and they hear it so right you know it's just that's kind of creepy i think yeah that is creepy but i mean the the creepiest part for me was just them tapping on the windows and hitting the house i mean that to me that's they knew whenever i was laying down and as soon as i would like be drifting off to sleep Bam. And that told me right there that, hey, they're looking in your window, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they're peeking in. So <clears throat> that first game camera I put up was this little window. They've knocked this window out. They've left prints on this window. 
they've tapped on it a couple of times, like three or four times. And it's just, it's, it's creepy to know that they're peeking in on you like that and <laughs> watching you. I'm kind of boring, so I don't know why they're even watching me. <laughs> Cause they're very <laughs> bored out in the woods. Yeah, they, must be. they must be, but, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's that, that's the creepiest part to me. And I don't know. <laughs> what are the most common vocals you hear? Whoops, howls? They mimicking. Uh, mimicking? I'll, yeah, like I'll I'll get the the owl calls a lot. Yeah. And you know, the, you know how a uh, barred owl has that little trill at the end of its calls. Uh huh. Yeah. Boogers don't seem to be able to. Well, I don't know if they can't do it or they just don't do it, but. I don't hear that a lot. I mean, there's real owls and there's, you know, you get that. And then whenever you get the owl, then something else will happen. It seems like they kind of go in teams or uh, uh, two or three or even four at times. And one will be over here, then the other one over here. And whenever you get your attention over on this one, and maybe you're getting too close to seeing it or whatever, another one back here will make a big knock or whatever and do a different type of owl noise and stuff. And it's, you know, Native Americans used to do that when they was out and hunting parties or warring or whatever, and they were sneaking up in a camp. They would make different noises to communicate back and forth with each other. Right. right. I think it's about the same thing as that. Yeah, I think we're on the same page when it comes to that. Cause, and it seems like different areas, they will use different mimics. You know, right. some may use owls, some may use coyotes. Uh, we even suspected one time that they were doing cricket chirps and, uh, that was something that was new for us to hear. Yeah. And it was almost like we were surrounded by them and that was their way of communicating with one another. One time at the lake, I was walking, it was in February, it was right after I found that track, like maybe a few days later, but I heard a frog in February. And then I heard another frog across the, across the, you know, the lake was drained down to the winter levels, but across the way on the other mountainside came another frog. I think that might've been them communicating. Yeah, probably so. The creepiest one in this, I wish to God I'd had a clear or just <laughs> presence of mind to sit up with the flashlight and the phone, but I couldn't find neither one. They was underneath my pillow, but I was camped. At, we was me and two of my buddies was camped out back up here on the ridge line, and we'd hear all night long stuff was going on, knocks and different vocalizations, and and they're really it's hard to tell what makes the noise. You know, it could be an owl doing that, unless you see what's doing it then it's, it's really, it's really hard to, to tell. But I mean, we heard dogs barking and there's no dogs back in there. But anyway, later that night they went to bed and my buddy was snoring loud and I could not sleep. I was laid out in the back of my truck. All of a sudden I hear on each side of me, I caught bush talk. I don't know what, what y'all might call it, but back and forth, it was like a, a series of clicks and pops, like mouth pops and like even small whistles and stuff like and then the other one would do it. Then the other one would do it. it. What it reminded me was, you ever watch that movie Signs with Mel Gibson about the aliens? Yeah, yeah. You know how the aliens talk? It's kind of like that. Yeah. Or I tell you exactly, well, not exactly, but very similar, is there's some tribes over in Africa that, that speak like that. Yeah. That's how they talk. Right. And it sounded just like, and they was like on either side of me, back and forth, and it went on for like, I think like forever, but I'm, it was at least maybe up to five minutes. And I'm sitting here, and I'm trying to dig for my dad. Going, Where, what, what did I do with that flashlight? Where's my phone at? Now I need to record this. And trying to wake my buddy up, throwing dog food over at his tent so he could get up. He just kept on snoring. And I swear, I think it was a snoring that brought him in. They was like, well, camp's quiet. There's someone snoring. They're asleep. Let's go in and check him out. The fire died down. It was in October. There was a full moon, but the moon had went down over the mountain. And it was, you know, just barely a glow off that fire. And it was pretty much pitch black back up in there. Could not find my flashlight. Later after, <laughs> I, I, like like I said, about five minutes went on, I finally got that light. And I just eased up and shined the light, didn't see nothing. But uh, I think they took off because it kind of got quiet after a while. Like I said, after a few minutes, it kind of got quiet. And 
I think what well, I think I blew it by throwing the dog food over at the tent trying to get my buddy up to, to see <laughs> yeah. what's going on. But we'd heard them all night. We'd hung glow sticks up, and there was something passing in front of the glow sticks, and it was it was pretty wild night. Yeah. Yep. We went down and peed beside of the tree. Oh no! And didn't know it, but there was a structure close by. Well, I went back up uh, a few days later to make sure we didn't leave no garbage or anything up there. And that tree was, it looked like someone stuck a piece of dynamite in it and it just exploded. It was all splintered up and just, man, it was crazy looking. But it was not like that, that the night we camped. And not, like I said, I went up there a couple of days later and it was like that. And I think it's where we were peeing down there. Yeah, you so talked about that in Bigfoot Odysseys. <laughs> Uh, documentary and I just want to say we we want to thank Carrie for letting us use the videos from that documentary the videos that y'all were seeing come from that documentary Larry I've been seeing some all caps are we Man, getting behind on questions we are, we're loaded down by them okay well let's I, go I don't them. know I don't know what time Rick's got to go to work tomorrow, but we'll go. Okay. No, I'm off tomorrow. Rick's going deer hunting tomorrow. I'm, oh. off, I'm off the next couple of days. Uh, well, you better be short and sweet with them then. All right. Spencer wants to know about the caves on your property. I know I've seen videos that you put up that you found caves. Talk a little bit about caves on your property, and then we only have about 30 more questions to go. <laughs> They're not really caves. <laughs> We call them rock houses. They're more like rock cliffs, I guess you would call them. But they don't go back. None that I've found. I'm sure they're around here because Kentucky is real with caves. Not too far from me is Carter Cave, like less than an hour away. And then there's Mammoth Caves. It's a couple hours from me. But, you know, Kentucky's real with them. And there's some old mine shafts and stuff around here, too, where they did coal mining. But, uh... There, it's mostly rock cliffs back in here. Now, some of them do kind of go back in there, but they don't go real far. But I have, one time I was walking and pulled up above one of these rock houses. It's the one I used to camp out in. And whenever I was young, I would go camping out in that before deer hunting the next morning. So I'd be up there, man. I thought I was slick. Sometimes yeah. rocks and sticks would get thrown in at me. And I had no idea what was going on then. <laughs> but I'd pulled up there and I had my dog, the same one I got now. And I started walking down to that <laughs> to that rock house, and there's another place beside of it that goes. It's a smaller a smaller cave. I can get back in it pretty good, and it's you know I'm a pretty big feller, and I can crawl back in it pretty good. But it goes back and to the right. Well, anyway, I, I started walking down the path to get to it, and just this man just rotted meat, smelly stink hit me. Oh, man, what the heck is that? Well, in front of the opening to that rock cliff was a broke-off branch that had leaves on it. This was a... The leaves had already fell. I can't remember what time of the year. I'm sure it was late fall. But it still had the old brown... You know how, like, a, in this, a summer storm or something, the branch will break off with the green leaves on it and it'll just turn brown and stay on there forever. Right. It was like that and had been drug in front of the, uh, the opening to it. And on the ledge there was several little red berries, like someone had stuck a handful of berries up there and I found a couple of tracks and stuff and I I thought I heard something whenever I shut off my machine going down the hill anyway I walked down there and he got that smell my dog just went Phew, gone she's gone she went to the house <laughs> she, did, she did not like that smell at all but I found tracks and stuff around it but yeah there's several little cracks and crevices and stuff like that that they can get back in around here right all right, Bird Nest wants to know: Do the X's mean keep out and the arches mean come in, or what's your opinion on the X's and arches? I have never found a Bigfoot field manual written by Bigfoot <laughs> <laughs> that explains what they all mean. Now, I have no, I've got my theories, and other people's got theories on what they mean, but who knows what their logic if they if. I think they're communicating with each other, not exactly to us, with some of this stuff. I have one structure, and I call it the ever-changing structure, and they would just come and lean stuff up against it. And I think yeah. it meant, like, maybe they got scouts. I mean, this is all pure speculation, but what kind of makes sense to me is they had scouts that went out before the main uh, clan, 
and here I think I've got anywhere from six to eight members in the this local clan, and I gathered that from all the different size tracks I found in one year. Four tracks I found all together on the same day within a you know space this big, and they was all four of them with different size barefoot tracks right by that thing. So I think that kind of meant uh, the the leaners maybe leaning what way they're going to. Hey, I went this way to to go hunting. But the X by my stand, I mean, maybe it just means, hey, there's humans that come here or whatever, but I, I don't know what they mean. I mean, why wouldn't they just look at the stand and say, well, you know, somebody's got a deer stand there. Yeah. I have no idea what they mean. I do think that they use them. They make structures, and I think it has to be for a practical reason, <clears throat> like the kill boxes for hunting. I think they use, uh, yeah. you know, being over saplings to make like a, kind of like an obstacle course, so it kind of either – slows a deer down or diverts its attention like one time i found a uh up sinky holler i went down in usually where i parked my atv i seen a big slide mark like something that slid on the ground i went down there and look it was tracks it was all the leaves are off where there were deer tracks and <laughs> booger tracks yeah and it looked like they was on the run and it goes into this kill box and then there's a blind there, and I don't know if there's another one waiting at the blind or the one that was chasing the deer caught up to it. But there's also a big fresh rock on the ground, and on a tree on the side of the tree was blood and deer hair stuck to the tree. And I think, I think what happened is he chased the deer, and either one hit it with a rock, or the other one reached out and grabbed it and smacked it up against the tree to, to put it out. I found the deer carcass actually later, right back up here on the hill. Yeah. So I think that it, it ran it right through that box and. You, I know you guys know what I mean by a kill box, but it's like saplings and stuff that they yeah. they pull over, right. and just like an obstacle course to either slow them down or to divert their attention or who knows what. Do you find them on the animal trail itself? Sometimes I do, but most of the time uh, they're close to the animal trails. It's uh, sometimes they'll block and it uh, seems like they'll block an animal trail and divert them over. <laughs> along uh beside of it going a different direction like the you know a deer normally walking through the woods is going to take the easiest way it can go and if you know they deer will establish their trails but sometimes these trails will be blocked so a deer will have to walk around it right. and then it seems like then, then there'll be another tree bent here so the deer will have to go in this direction or whatever but uh yeah i found them alongside and actually on them Larry, let's. You got another question? Yeah, Rick, have you ever? This comes from Sandy D. Have you ever put a GoPro on Bailey? Yeah, it was a, a total disaster. <laughs> really? Bailey is actually a worse photographer than me. <laughs> uh, you're, you're good, Bailey. Don't listen to me, girl. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. No. Oh. Where I mean, did, it, where it, did it, you it, put the GoPro on her? I hung it underneath of her. You know, I don't have a harness where basically you can see her jaws and, yeah. and underneath. Now, it could work. I mean, don't get me wrong, but she would always knock it off. Bailey's a silly, silly dog, and she likes to get in the leaves and roll around and slide down the hillsides and everything else. <laughs> so twice, one time I took a leaf blower to the hillside to even find my GoPro because she knocked it off somehow. Oh, <laughs> that's after, not good. Yeah, After that, I've learned to tie a uh, bright orange ribbon to it. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. But yeah, it's just shaking all over the place. Now it could work for maybe a quick uh, glimpse of one if you could pause it and just have a pretty decent picture. That might could work, right? But I don't know. God, it makes you seasick to even watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> now you said earlier that you maybe put notes on a calendar or something have you reviewed your calendars back a few years and noticed any patterns or behavior this comes from heather bradley yeah like i said i only did that for one year and i need to do it again like i said i've got lazy with it all it's uh, easy to do yeah well i mean there's only so many things i guess a feller can share and you know, i'm not i'm not saying that i'm not going to videotape or anything like that anymore but you know i'm always going to have a a camera with me like i said i've got a bunch of videos from whenever i was on vacation that i haven't put up i don't think there's much there wasn't much really going on then a few things happened but uh yeah it's just uh 
like I say, that that's how I patterned the three week pattern, but then they changed it. So right. I, I need to start doing that again. I really do need to start doing it all again. But man, you know, Bigfoot's just basically part of my life. I didn't go out looking for them. They kind of found me. And it's just, you know, there's so many other things to do around here. Right. But, you know, it's just, it never ends here at the farm. But I enjoy it and I love it. And I wish I had more time to put into it. But there's just, you know, I went for a full full year of doing hardly nothing. You know, I would work and then I'd be out in the woods and and trying to do all this and that. And then the second year I did not quite as much. Then the third year, not quite as much. This summer, I, I think it's basically, I mean, and I'm not putting it down to anybody for doing it. But in the summertime, it's useless for me to go out. You can't see nothing. I mean, there's too many places for them to hide. You can learn stuff, and that's that's you know it's it's worth it to do it. But hot, sticky, bugs eat you up. I mean, summer yeah. is horrible, horrible. I agree with that. I don't <laughs> like it either. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> right. Tell me, have you any evidence that you have collected that you haven't shared that may be so good you hate to put it out? to get questioned on it or to have it debunked or whatever? No, I've never got anything good enough to, to, uh, to hide from anybody. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> anything I get, I mean, I try to put it out there and I ask, you know, if I think I've got something good, I'll ask, you know, people that I trust and stuff, Hey man, what do you think about this or whatever? And right. this and that, but yeah, I've never got the Patterson Gimlin film or anything like that. Nothing, nothing even close to that good may neither yeah i mean it's just it's it just boggles the mind how hard it is to to film it. i mean that's why you don't see many good films like the freeman footage or yeah you know, yeah what's that one the mississippi skunk ache where it's pulling apart that tree or the right the film and all that i mean you don't you don't see a whole lot of good booger videos well i, I agree with that and that's something that a lot of people in the Bigfoot community have problems with people that post just a picture in the bush of a face or whatever. Mm -hmm. Some want to call it pareidolia. Some say it's a legit thing. It, some could be, some could be pareidolia. But it, it, it don't prove nothing at all. Exactly. And that we, I know Mark and I don't even bother. I don't know how the people have time to go back frame by frame to look for these. I don't either. Like I said, I'll put, I'll put my videos up there. I don't edit or nothing. And right. I mean, I, I do kind of know how, but I don't, I just basically, if I'm having activity that day, I'll definitely put that video up. Sometimes, you know, a lot of people can get out and walk in the woods, and I, I absolutely love it. Right. What I said about not going out in the summertime, I actually, you know, I went out and walked around a few times. <clears throat> I walked out by the lake, and it was over 100 degrees. But that was on the, the lake trails, the back trails that's gated off that nobody can get to. And uh, I had a bit of activity then, too. But some people can't get out. They just like looking at the scenery. It's, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful out there yeah. in God's creation. A lot of people can't get out there anymore and do that. So I'll, I'll put up videos like that. But, yeah, I really don't have uh, – I have nothing, nothing at all that would prove anything to a skeptic at all. And yeah, the, the ones that I have that I think I've got something in it is, you know – for people that believe and and uh, or know that Bigfoot exists, it's it's pretty interesting. Some of my stuff, but I don't have you know anything groundbreaking or any really good uh, pictures or video of Bigfoot. <laughs> I've tried. Uh, Sorry, uh, I understand. <laughs> I know some people in the chatter. I don't know. They're taking your side, Rick, and they don't understand that me and your friends. But I guess they're taking offense to how I'm asking the question or something. <laughs> I don't know. You kind of do that to people, Larry. I guess so. But... I don't know. No, Larry's cool. It, what, it <laughs> what it is, folks, is this is how folks, this is how guys used to talk to each other. I mean, <laughs> I, could, I could sit here and call Larry a yellow belly sapsucker, and he'd call me something else, and we're still buddies about it. That's <laughs> That's right. we're, we don't mean to be offensive. We're just talking. <laughs> That's right. All right. We've had a couple of people say something about the chicken massacre. This must be a good story. Tell us about the chicken massacre. The chicken massacre. 
Uh, well, we're gonna have to dig in on this one. The chicken. I mean, I've had a couple of chickens go missing. And maybe that's what they're talking about. I. I mean, I had big old fat white. What are they called? Uh, Cornish Cornish rocks. Is that what they're called? Uh -huh, Cornish rock. That's the first chickens I got, and they're solely for a meat bird. And they don't have a long life. They have heart attacks. They put on weight and have heart attacks. They're just a big beefy bird that's raised for meat. Well, I had these fellers, and this is a. Uh, you know, I hadn't had them too long, and they wasn't fully grown or anything. But I was in the barn working around, and I heard the awful commotion out there. This is whenever I first started racing chickens. And I went out there, and, I mean, the commotion happened. I run out the barn, run around the corner, and there's nothing. Nothing. There's a couple feathers on the ground. I'm down one bird. I have no idea what got it. There's no way a hawk picked this bird up. The hawk, the, it had to be an eagle or something like that. But it was a white bird, and I'm looking all around up in the hills and everything and don't see it. Well, later on, I found a bunch of white feathers right up here on this ridge line over in Stinky Holler. Between, you know, between my holler and Stinky Holler, right up here on the ridge line. I don't know if that's what they're talking about. But, uh, yeah, they've. I, th I think a booger might have got fat. Like if a fox or something gets it, then, or uh, even a coyote, it seems like there'd be more of a mess. Yeah. And I've had a couple uh, couple chickens go missing that uh, there, there's just no mess there. <laughs> and a duck. One duck went missing with no mess. They must have been hungry. Yeah. Well, I haven't found that, that one chicken up on the hill. Well, a lady in the woods wants you to talk about the night they threw a log at you. <laughs> that was over on uncle bob's property and i went up there and i got a signal up there and i decided to go live and i had parked my truck and i always parked my truck facing out and you know my daddy always told me that no matter where you're at like if you're at walmart or wherever you go you park out you never know you might need to get out of there and my daddy was kind of an outlaw back in his younger days so was i and you know he, just he still about, looks like an outlaw but uh i mean he's you know a good fella to do anything but you know sometimes sometimes you get in trouble as a young man you might uh need to get out of there but anyway i, I had my truck parked out and i had done a, a one of them haulers that i do and i could hear something moving above me and i had i had my flare and i was looking couldn't see nothing all of a sudden i hear something go and bam, it hit the back of my truck, and it was a stick about that long and about that big around. And mm. whizzed by my head and hit the back of that truck. Scared the whizzed <laughs> crap out of me. <laughs> and I, like I said, I was live on YouTube, and I jumped in the, threw my tr phone in the truck, jumped in the truck, and I got out of there. And I got about, I don't know, maybe 300 yards away. And I said, just stop, dude, stop. Get, just stop, get together, man, get out and listen. I stopped and got out and listened, never did hear anything. So then I went on back to the house, changed my drawers. <laughs> and uh, it was, it, 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 I mean, just the bang scared me because I mean, you don't expect something like that. Yeah, it was right. right beside of me. That my I got a little Toyota Tacoma, and they got that uh, like a uh, fiberglass type plastic bed in them. Yeah, and it was just loud. It bang, it was loud. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rick, what about I saw something about Kermit. Let me scroll up a little bit. You know anything about Kermit? Kermit and the tree. Yeah, they had left a uh, an old stuffed Kermit the Frog. I don't know where they get all this stuff from, but they left the old Kermit the Frog doll up here in the tree. And I had heard them up there. I think it was the night before, up in the bottom, doing their howls and call. I, no, actually, I think they was hunting coyotes that night. Let me think. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Okay, I had heard them up there. And I've got this on video a couple of times, but you can uh, you'll hear this like that. The I don't know, it's kind of like the Ohio how, but it's like that long, and then a bunch of coyotes will cut loose, and then you can hear a coyote going like it gets caught. Yeah. Well, that had happened, and I had walked up to the barn, and I had my three fifty seven on me in a spotlight. Well, a coyote was standing up at the bottom, and I took a shot at it, and I think I hit it. You could there. I definitely heard an impact. So there was actually two of them up there. The other one took off. 
was like, all right, I'll go check that out in the morning. Well, in the morning, the coyote wasn't there. But I know I heard, I hid it because I heard the sun. But there was a Kermit the, uh, the, Kermit the Frog doll standing <laughs> up in the tree. <laughs> that is interesting, for sure. <laughs> I mean, <there's, laughs> yeah, it was crazy. There's an old graveyard up here that someone or something has stuck a, it was a stuffed bear up in the tree. And it was pretty high up in the tree. It was a, it was out from the graveyard and I just seen it and I walked over and what is that? And I got it out of the tree and I brought it back here and stuck it over here. And I called it the gift tree where they always stick the deer and there's just been different gifting and stuff go on there. Well, they came and got it. They took it and it was gone for a couple of weeks, a month. Well, I found it again up in another tree and I cut down a sapling and finally poked it out of the tree and brought it back here. We disappeared again and it was gone for a long time, I, you know, a few months. And then one night I was sitting out here and we was having an activity and you could hear rocks and different calls and stuff. And all of a sudden you hear something just get knocked over. And what it was was buckets got knocked over. And that's that one I recorded. There was one, I think, over here in the creek that threw that bear. I guess I was too stupid. They was like, he's too stupid to find the bear. We're going to have to throw it back at him. <laughs> they threw it out here. <clears throat> well, they made that noise. That one took off running and you could hear it laughing. I was like, do you all hear this? It's freaking laughing about it. And I went out there, and it was that bear that they had thrown. Huh. I stuck it back in the tree, and I found it since. I haven't seen that bear. It's been over a year now. Well, they may have had another little one that's playing with a bear now. They might. I, I found a, a few little tracks around here that looks like baby tracks. And even the prints on the windows, I mean, four inches long by right. wide. That's, it looked like little baby hand prints. All right, Pam updated her question on the chicken kill. She said it's a chicken kill that the boogers watched you do, and then oh, wow. and then the cat in the can. Yeah, the the white birds. I was uh, harvesting them, and I had a twenty two, and I would shoot them in the head. Well, I shot one of them, and then something let off like a mournful cry from the hillside. It was like, ooh. Like it was sad uh, to that and he was pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> I didn't know that one was called the Chicken Masker. <laughs> <laughs> they must not have liked that. No, it was it was pretty crazy, Simon. You're taking their food from them. Well, they got one. I figured I'd get the other one. <laughs> yeah a couple of them birds died of heart attacks i mean i went up there one time and one of them was having a heart attack and i had no idea what was, i didn't even need it because i was like there's something wrong with this thing <clears throat> so i looked it up and they're prone to heart heart attacks and legs breaking because they get so much weight put on them so fast but a cat in the can was i came out one day and i was getting ready to to go to work this is where i had all the chickens and all that it's a couple of years ago I could hear my cat. It was going, meow, meow. And I was looking, looking, couldn't find it. Well, they had stuck it, and this cat was aggravating. It would walk right underneath your feet and get, get you tripping. I mean, it would stay underneath your feet. But I found it. It was in the garbage can, the garbage can lid. It's one of those, like, rubber made cans that you can snap the lid down on. I mean, you've got to snap it on uh -huh. to be good. Right. And it was snapped back down on there. So there's no way the cat would have gone on it, fell in the lid, flipped over, and, I mean, it, you know, a million and one shot. But it had been in there for, I guess, a little, a little while. Lucky little fella didn't smother because it had the, the trash bag all ripped up from inside. Mm. And I, I think I just, take, there wasn't much garbage in it. Now, I don't throw no food in my cans. I throw the, Bailey takes care of all the food. <laughs> scraps, kill it, anything. But they had stuck that cat in the garbage can. I think they'd done it because it was probably getting, you know, tripping them up or whatever. Uh. But here recently, I've been losing a lot of cats, and I think that they might have got an appetite for them. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, the, the Chinese buffet might have quit dumping their food in the, in the dumpsters in town. <laughs> they might have. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say is the, I don't know, the weirdest or strangest thing that's happened around your farm that you can think of off the top of your head? Uh, man, there's been so many weird. Yes, it has. I mean, the laughing's weird. That bush talk, that was weird. The cat in a can, that was weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's just, there's just so much, so many things. Uh, and they're, they're just getting started, too. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, it's been going on for about five years now. But like, like I said, there's I could hear a couple of vocalizations during hunting season last week, or you know, whenever I was off last week. But right. Like the past few nights, I haven't heard anything. And this usually I get home from work and I'll sit out here and listen. And I don't know. There's just so many weird things that's happened. I mean, it's just weird having you know Bigfoot's weird being real. Right. <laughs> Lady in the Woods wants you to talk about them repeating your words. Yeah, that was, oh, was that last winter, I guess? I would say words, and uh, I would leave my phone out here live on YouTube and go in the house and uh, play a harmonica, or we, you know, people would just sit there and listen. I'd play a harmonica. Well, there were some words, State Ema was one, and Aishi, they're supposedly like a Native American language that boogers understand well they they was repeating them i mean this is on video you could right. hear i would say it and then you could hear something out here say it and i, I think it was the same night we was all listening i had the phone right here pointing out this way i didn't have all the lattice and all that up then but i had like a little metal fire pit and they had threw a rock <laughs> they had threw a rock and hit that fire pit and scared the crap out of everybody and uh yeah that's what she's talking about on that they would they would they was repeating what I was saying. I mean, it, you could hear them do it. Well, turn around right now and let one of those words out and see if anything happens. <laughs> hey, Emma, Aishi. Hey, Emma, Mabishi. I haven't heard anything tonight or past couple months. I don't really think they're around right now. But this is the last weekend, and, and usually hunting really picks up the last, you know, whoever didn't get their deers out there for that last try during rifle season. But it's supposed to rain all weekend, too, so who knows. Yeah. Well, they do not like the rain. It messes their hair up, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, when's the last time you had your windows tapped on? That last, the, the time that I got it recorded on um, on video that was the last time because i put the game camera up and it stayed there right okay <laughs> you ain't gonna have that no more no that's just i mean that creeps me out man <laughs> <laughs> oh I, I understand have you actively searched for them at night by walking through the woods oh yeah oh yeah i've done that quite a few nights Yep, I've done it by myself, done it with a couple of people. One time a group with the BFRO came up, the guy that I said that I talked to. The first night we didn't have no activity. The second night we went over on Uncle Bob's land. We got paced on both sides. We heard different vocalizations, rocks were thrown. Well, uh, you probably know a couple of the Sheila and Bill uh, Tucker, the Squatch team, they were, they were there that night. And I had an old cheap infrared night vision thing. Yeah. <laughs> And me and Bill both seen this thing that kept poking his head up over like a rock. There was a rock, like a rock there, and then it kind of dropped down off the hill and it kept poking his head. It's a big old head, too, poking up. And it was, uh, yeah, that was pretty wild. We had a couple of them that sound, we would, I, I was like, look, let's take five steps and stop. Then we'll take four steps and stop. And we would walk and stop, and you could hear that extra step being took, be, us being shadowed. Yeah, I've, I've done it a few times when I mean, I've went camping and stuff. The way I got it figured is if they wanted me, they could have had me at any time growing up. Oh, yeah. So I yeah. stayed out in the hills. Yeah. I don't think I don't think they're out to hurt me. You know, I, like I said, I think they hunt with rocks. They could they could take me out. Even sitting right here, they could take me out. Right. But so far, mine ain't been buttholes too bad. Anyway, they're little brats, but they ain't buttholes. They, they ain't trying to hurt me, I don't think. I agree. Uh I tell my son that all the time. There's no telling how many times we've walked within feet of them going to a deer stand early in the morning or coming out at night. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they don't. That don't mean one wacko couldn't be out there and snap one evening and take you off. But right. Yeah, I'm sure, and I'm sure that does happen. You know, like I was saying, I fed them peanut butter and stuff like that before. Well, people. You know, throw out candy or even gift them chocolate and sugars and stuff like that. Well, that's not good. You know, it's not good for us. They don't have a dentist they can go to. Yeah. Right. You know, once a critter's teeth's gone, then they're done. Yeah. Yeah. You know? 
we're an easy target out there. We're a lot easier to catch than say a deer. And uh, yeah, they could have us at any time, or maybe like a one's injured or something like that. I mean, I'm not saying that don't happen, but for the for the most part, you know, if someone goes missing, what's the first thing that happens? There's people flooded in the yeah. woods for that. Yeah, person. yeah. And I think they know that. Or even if your you know your chicken goes missing, I'll I'll go look for where did my chicken go? They right go out there. So I don't think that happens very often. Or you'll start setting up stuff trying to figure out what is getting right. your chickens yeah right. lady in the woods ask about your missing tools well she sure talks a lot doesn't she <laughs> <laughs> that's my buddy Ned. i love her uh, uh yeah the stuff goes missing all the time only to reappear in the place that i've already looked 10 times for it one night i was out here and i was working on a tailgate of a a trailer and i had a ball peen hammer i was trying to get the tailgate off and it had pins in it instead of just folding it down like a smart person would i was trying to take it off <laughs> <laughs> i didn't fold it all the way down but anyway i laid it down and went to look for a punch or something came back well the ball peen was gone and there was a claw hammer laying there in its place so i think they had done that and, and uh, i'm pretty sure i was live because yeah i was live because you could hear the noise of it being moved off the trailer the metal but the dog food tote, I always keep a little yellow gallon bucket with a little handle on it, and I would dip the dog food out of it and put it in the dog dish and set it back on the tote because I'm bad to misplace things or the boogers move them. Or I don't, I don't know if I'm crazy or if they make me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I went back one time, and there was a flower pot sitting on it. One of the old cheap, like if you buy flowers from the store or whatever, they come in little cheap plastic pots. It was yeah. sitting on top of it, and the bucket was gone. I know I didn't do that. Nobody else lives here. So they're uh, all the time. I mean, they're all the time moving stuff. And, I, you know, again, I think they do it for kicks, just to be a little brass. Say, hey, what's yeah. the, what's, what's the crazy man running around like an idiot and look for his tool that we got? They're <laughs> like mischievous kids watch, oh, doing no, some no. prank to watch. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know how we was whenever we was teenagers. That's about how. And I think it's the younger ones that mess with me anyway. Did you ever find your hammer after you lost it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it showed back up. Okay, I, it might have showed back up that night. I missed one question. That's back to your going out at night. Uh, Dayworm asked if you felt safe while you were out at night by yourself or with people. Man, I'm not gonna lie; it gets very exciting at times. Very yeah. exciting. Like the time they threw the thing in the back of the truck. And I've been, you know, startled and scared and everything else. But for the most part, I mean, I don't... First of all, I, I'm i a Christian, and I wear the full armor of God. I mean, I, you know, all the time I pray about it, please keep me, you know, keep me safe. Right. Like I said, they could have me at any time. So... They, they haven't done it, and I've been going out in the woods and camping out by myself at night, back in these rock cliffs where I'm sure they hang out, like, during the rains or whatever, bad weather, and just camp there by myself all night with, you know, just the old cheap flashlights and stuff. Right. I mean, it, it, it does get exciting and downright scary at times, but I don't think they're out to do me any harm, so... Well, I totally understand what you mean about the armor of God thing. I tell Debbie, and I've told Mark that, that whenever I'm out in the woods, I feel like I've got protection around me. Right. I, do I mean, I, I mean, feel- these things can come and snap your neck in a second. But, yeah. and it may be a false sense of security thinking that, but that's what the good Lord tells us. Well, right. I, f- I feel safer in the woods than I do downtown Memphis. <laughs> yeah. Amen no that. doubt. Yeah, people, uh, yeah. I'm more nervous around people. That's for, for sure. I mean, especially nowadays. People, right. Crazy. I mean, I feel peace in the woods. I mean, that's my. Yeah, I do too. Place, I go to, I go to talk to God in the woods a lot. I mean, right. That's, you know, this year I didn't really care if I got a deer or not. I've still got deer meat from last year. My buddy got a deer. He gave me some of the meat and, 
course, I had to butcher it and bag it and all that for him. But, it, uh, you know, I just go out and I'd rather, like, if I go this weekend, I'm taking my video camera. If I see a deer, I'm going to try to film that. And I've always right. got at least my phone or whatever on me, but usually I'm packing a video camera everywhere I go now out in the woods. Well, the the last week I was off and I went deer hunting and I videoed more than I even pulled the gun up. Right. Like I told you, I didn't kill anything. Bigfoot and, has ruined hunting. <laughs> yeah. You're looking for them more than you are deer. That's true. Yeah, it's it great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I feel at peace. I mean, I don't, you know, if the good Lord wants a booger to take me out, then there's nothing I can do about it. That's <laughs> right. Uh, that's how it is with a thunderstorm that's got tornadoes right. and all yeah. that. Yeah. If it's Bring your it time on. to go, it's your time to go. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. That's right. Let's see. We're about an hour and a half in here, Larry. So we need to go about two more. We need to go to bed, Mark. No, I don't. <laughs> You're still mad about my headphone deal, aren't you? <laughs> big, big <laughs> Actually, I got Slade Monk leaving in the morning, uh, uh, coming from, tide. from Tuscaloosa, Roll Tide, coming up here to my house tomorrow. We're going to ride up to Larry's. And, and then it's on. And then right, it's that on. Sounds like that sounds like trouble to me. We'll probably wind up in jail, Rick. You'll have to come bail us out. <laughs> I, you fellas need to come down this way. You know, we do. You know, we would love to come down there. You know, I think maybe you should start uh, using that calendar again and kind of figuring out when they're coming through and and then me and Larry will come out there and hammock camp when yeah. they come through. Oh, we could do that. I mean, I had it where I was setting up stands and blinds and stuff, trying to get in front of them. I never did any good at it. But, I mean, I got a little bit of activity, but nothing good on field. Yeah, I'd love to have y'all up. I mean, y'all is one of the – there's a lot of people that go out and do this, and you can't keep up with it, everybody. It's just, you know, impossible. Right. But you're also ones that, one of the ones that I watch, you know, every video out, because y'all go about it with common sense, not everything's Bigfoot. Uh, you try to – debunk your own stuff i mean i like like i was saying i'm my biggest skeptic and you're always like that too and it's just uh my, still my favorite video and i think y'all got something in it's the one on the boat i mean you all ain't scared to try different stuff and the yeah. the, the hammock camping i think it's just awesome it, that's what i take now is my hammock whenever i go camping like the <laughs> red river gorge or whatever right <clears throat> but yeah y'all's more than welcome to come down anytime you want it but sounds I'll, great. I'll get the can. I'll get a, a calendar and start marking it down again. Yeah, get busy with that. But they, <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> like I said, they've changed it up. I don't know what schedule they're on now. I know it's still a few weeks between visits or whatever. And uh, there, sometimes they'll come in and they'll stay, and then they'll keep coming. I mean, I don't know. I guess it depends on what kind of what kind of mood they're in or whatever. Yeah. Well, you're probably kind of like us. We believe that they have a pretty consistent pattern about what they do. I, I think pretty, yeah. Well, see, like here, like whenever I was tracking or I would, like I said, a lot of my time I'll get off work, sit out here, and I'll listen for vocalization with the parabolic uh, dish or whatever. And you can hear a vocalization here, and then you'll hear one over here. Well, it seemed like it, they was going in like counterclockwise around me. And, you know, it would take up to three weeks and they'd be back around back around my place. But we was talking earlier about have, have I talked to any neighbors? And in the beginning, I didn't. I didn't really talk to anybody around here. I tried. That was one of the reasons for me putting up a channel to see if anybody else around here was having activity. Yeah. But now I have got to talk to a few people that has had activity. One guy lives a couple miles down the road from me. And another guy lives a couple reefs tops away up a different main branch holler. And uh, both of them had activity. I'm sure there's a lot of folks around here that does it. But they're like me and they had no idea what was going, what's going on. And maybe there are some that was that knows. I think my papa knew, but he never really, he would warn me to, you know, stay close to the house at night. And 
Right. Uh, he called them Woods Boogers. That's kind of where I got the channel name. Uh -huh. right. I, don't, I don't put the S behind Wood. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, he would he would uh, just make statements like that. I remember one time he shot a possum out here in the yard. He said, watch, that thing will be gone by morning. I was like, Pat, yeah. boy, I think, that, that thing's dead. It ain't going nowhere. I couldn't wait to get up the next morning. I mean, I was a little, maybe eight, nine years old, little fella. I got up that morning, ran out. Possum was gone. I said, Pat, boy, where'd that possum go? He said, I guess his buddy took him off for the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's funny, that generation the knowledge they had and yeah. they were cryptic with it it yeah. seemed you know yeah. they well, didn't I mean, want to come out and say anything they wanted you to learn it for yourself right well it's a, i mean you know it's kind of a taboo subject because right. mainstream, mainstream don't want it out there right well before mark cuts us off rick tell us about your channel and the evolution of your channel from what you started off doing to where you're at now. Man, my mind changes like the weather around here. <laughs> it, I, I mean, you know, you get theories and you get thinking, well, this is how they do and this is what they are and this is how they behave. And then they'll totally do something different and blow your mind. Yeah. But my channel, whenever I first started, you know, there was a couple people out there that had them around their house. I think, uh, like, uh, I think Barbara Shoup. I had yeah. a place, uh, Christopher Noel, and uh, there's Scott Carpenter. Had uh, they finally came to his house or whatever, and that's whenever I first started watching YouTube. And that was the, I think that was the only three. There might have been, uh, there probably was some more, but there was a guy, Cool Kev. He had him around his place too, but I haven't heard nothing from him in a while. But anyway, there wasn't a whole lot of information out there. And like I said, I was watching one of the Outlaws podcasts, and they had the thing about uh how to tell if a bigfoot lives around your house and they ran down this list of what to look for and so, uh -huh. they are so i started you know started my channel to to try to document what's going on around here and let people be aware of different things to look for and what they do around here now if that's not saying what mine does here is the same things that they would do up in ohio or uh, mississippi or wherever you know right. i think each clan they're, you know, they're the, the same, which, you know, there's maybe different species of them or whatever, but they're the, they're the same and a lot of traits and stuff are the same, but like my family celebrates Christmas different than your family. We got right. certain traditions that we do, but it's all the same deal. You know what I yeah. mean? Right. But maybe we eat ham and you eat turkey. <laughs> it's the clans do different. You can't put them in a box and say, you know, anything definite, like what mine do here, mine throw rocks, well, maybe they don't, you know, even a county over. It's just that I just started this channel for just awareness and document what was going on and try to, at first, just to reach out to see if anybody else had this stuff going on. And I have met a lot of good people on here that has stuff going on. And, you know, some of them's in the chat tonight and got to know and talk to these people. And it's just, it's, it's kind of eerie how the things are so similar. Yeah. But, you know, little differences. But, uh, now it's just got to where it's that, like I talked to a guy last night that lives over toward Red River Gorge. It's got him on his property. And then another guy the other day, I talked to him and they were wanting to know, well, what do we do? How do we give him away? <clears throat> and my best advice was what, you know, I can only speak to what works here. Put up game cameras. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah. how many good pictures of game cameras do we, uh, Bigfoot do we have from a game camera? Right. Yeah. Not very many. I mean, I've got that one. I think I sent you that picture, Mark. And I swear, I think it's a booger sticking his hand up to the camera, and you can still see right. You can see its hand and a hairy arm and a hairy torso, and that's the same camera that they put that dead flying squirrel on that time. Huh. But uh, yeah, I think there's there's just something they know something and up with the game cameras. What I think personally, what I think, you know, is they see people going out and putting a deer feeder out. And they see them deer coming to it. Then they see, you know, they got a hunting blind or a stand up next to it. Deer coming to that feeder. They got the camera sitting up there. Then, bam, deer dies. They killed the deer. And they know something's up with all that. Right. And maybe they, met, they relate that game camera to that. Yeah. You know, who knows what they think. But that's kind of what I think. Well, you don't like the older game cameras with the flash on them. Mm -hmm. And you know they sit back and 
and see animals go by and it sets that flash off. Right. And uh, I, I just think they're self-aware enough of a critter that, that they retain that and they understand that. And if they get close to that thing, that thing's going to flash on them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That, I mean, that's what they do, sit there and watch. They watch. They watch our routines. They watch every every little thing you do when they're around. They watch. I mean, and that's how they've got by so long being undetected. They're not well, stupid. They're not stupid at all. Well, the lady in the woods wants to know about the dead squirrel gift. The one on the camera? I guess is what she's talking about. It's that game camera that, that I was telling you about. I went up there and there's a uh, dead flying squirrel. It was on Thanksgiving. Was it a year? Maybe two years ago. I can't, I can't remember anymore. Uh, it was definitely during Thanksgiving because I remember telling the video something about Thanksgiving. Bigfoot brings Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> and I found a, dead, a little dead flying squirrel on top of that game camera. Huh. I mean, not either the the squirrel curled up and died on top of a game camera, or something put it there. Wow. Well, Rick, we really appreciate you coming on, and I don't know. I just think so much about you. I know we first met a few years ago at a meeting greet, and you come bearing gifts and food for us and I don't I think everybody there at that camp just thought so much about you and I just want to say what a good guy you are and uh and I just I just appreciate everything that you contribute to this community because there's there's so many people out there that will if they disagree with you on something they want to get ugly and I have never seen that with you. You have you have always taken the high road. And uh, whenever I was, Larry wanted to get this podcast going, and I couldn't figure out that OBS. And and you you took time and helped me and and helped work us through it. And you're just a great guy, and we just. Really appreciate you coming on tonight. I appreciate you having me, Mark. I'll never forget meeting y'all at LBL, and you taught me this trick with these headphones and a recorder. It was the greatest thing. You know, Mark, Mark Noble taught me that, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kane. <laughs> but but, but no, it was great, and y'all helped me along the way. And I mean, just good sellers, and I, man, I appreciate good people. Well, Larry, do you have any last words? Uh, I also appreciate Rick coming on. And I mean, I look forward to seeing your videos. You always have something good going on, whether it's activity or just good conversation. Yeah. I, I don't know how in the world you carry on a conversation as well as you do on video. Because I can say about two sentences and I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but we do appreciate you coming on. And it's always great to hear all the stories and things you've had. You tell the stories very well and have a good memory on what all's went on. Because you've had a lot of activity for sure on that farm. No doubt about it. And can't wait to see more of it. Well, we're going to... Uh... I'm going to put a link to uh, Rick's channel and I'm in the comments and pin it. And I'm also going to put a link whenever uh, Carrie and Linda Arnold came up there and they filmed uh, the documentary of Rick's. Because if you haven't watched that, it's definitely worth watching. And... We want to thank our new subscribers and our faithful followers. Uh, we, For our new subscribers, we have a lot of evidence videos 
and they're worth checking out. We try to share tips that we have found that where we have gotten success in the woods. And if there's any guests that you would like to see on Beast TV, post their names in the comment section. And we will sick Debbie Jones on them. And please hit that like button for us and leave us a comment. That, that helps us with YouTube. And Larry and I always want to thank Debbie Jones and Shelly Reed for all the behind the scenes work they do. And check out our sister channel, which is Larry's channel, Beast of the Woods. And our friends at Bigfoot Od Odyssey, Bigfoot Outlaws, Dixie Cryptid, Nightcallers, and also on the Bigfoot Odyssey, don't forget that there is a GoFundMe page to raise money for the equipment that is being bought for the expedition. And we want to thank Rick again for coming on tonight, and we will see you again same bat time, same bat channel. Night, night, footers. This has been a Sawdust Production.